Hey YouTubies, it's me Denise coming to you with a video on questions and answers about joining the military. So um, I've, I always have a lot of people asking me about the military and the joining process. I know what you're thinking. She's too cute to be in the military. Thank you. But I always have a lot of people asking me, you know, um, why I joined the military? Is it hard? How do you fit in your everyday life? Just a bunch of questions. So I thought that I would do a video on it. Someone also suggested that I did and here I am. So again, I'm in the United States Army Reserves. I'll explain, you know, the difference and all that. But a lot of people always ask me, is this something that I've always wanted to do? And I can't say that it is. Um, I didn't grow up around anyone, you know, influencing me to join. I didn't have anyone in my immediate family that was in that expired me or anything like that. Um, my high school year, my junior year in high school, uh, recruiters actually start coming up to the school and they would just do little things like um, if you do so many push ups, you can win a pin with the U.S. Army on it or a keychain or a magnet. And I just started doing little things like that and came really close with one of the recruiters that used to come up a lot. <clears throat> Excuse my baby in the background. So um, I was, you know, 16, a junior. I'm like, I'll join then in my senior year. So he's like, okay, hold you to that. Well, Fast forward, senior year came. I started my senior year like August 20 something and I found out I was pregnant August 31st. So fast forward a little bit more. I had my daughter. Um, my daughter moved and developed really quickly. And when she was about two, I was actually in dental assistant school and it was something that I had started and it's like do you really want to do this I had went to cosmetology school before I thought to myself that I couldn't do regular college because you know I had a two-year-old and I was a single parent so I was going to dental assistant school and the director of the um, the dental program actually came in and he was a retired air force soldier I believe and that just like sparked my mind again on it um and then I got to thinking, you know, my daughter's two. She's walking, she's talking, she's potty trained. She can tell you who did it, why they did it, how it hurt her, and what she did when it hurt her. <laughs> you know, so I started talking with my mom. Because like I said, I was a single parent. I started talking with my mom, and she said that, you know, if I did decide to go, she will watch my daughter, things of that sort. So the first thing is, <clears throat> I guess, deciding is that something you really want to do. I'm not sure if you guys are like me, but when something sparks my interest, I Google it. Google is my best friend and I I I get all that I can that I feel is factual from Google, Wikipedia, anything, and I just did a bunch of research on the different branches. Um, I'm not going to lie, my first choice was Air Force. Because again, at high school, I had a um, security guard who, um, he was in the Air Force. And he actually, I'm sorry, he actually told me that the Air Force was very family oriented. It'll be good for me and my daughter. So I went to the Air Force recruiting station. And I'm not sure if it was absolutely true or if the recruiter just didn't want to deal with anyone at the time or what it was. But they told me as soon as I walked in, this was in 2009. They told me as soon as I walked in, like, the only two jobs we have is maintenance and security. So if you don't want to do that, you might as well not start the process. Hey. What you talking about? Sorry. So he's like, you might as well not start the process. And I'm like, maintenance, security? Couldn't see myself doing that. At that time, I kind of felt like I was just too girly girl. And I walked out the office, kind of disappointed, but lo and behold, I looked to my left and there was an army recruiting station. So I went in there and I talked to um, my recruiter. I will never forget his name, Sergeant Robita. And me and him talked for a while. Now, with that being said, I didn't know much about the army because I had looked up so much stuff about the Air Force that me and him talked. I got some papers, some pamphlets. I went home and I went Google crazy again. 
and just looked up what I could on the internet about the Army. Um, my recruiter definitely stayed in touch with me a lot. He, um, of course, that's what recruiters are going to do. So if you are wanting to join, once you go talk to a recruiter, just know they're going to call you. They're going to email you. They're going to do things to keep you coming back in so that you'll join. They can get over, you know, get the process done and over with for you as smoothly, smoothly as they can. Once I did my research, I was just like, you know what? I might as well do it because, um, and this is me now, the branches in order to me, don't get me wrong. I love the army, but even when I speak with those, um, that's looking to join the military, I always say, first and foremost, just do your research yourself. Do your research on all the branches and then that will help you determine which one you want to join. But I would say in order, my mind was Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines. But really, it was just Air Force or Army. Not to, you know, downplay any other branches because, you know, you're all my battle buddies. But I didn't want to join the Marines. It's never been an interest to me. It just hasn't. Uh, with the Navy, once I told my dad that I wanted to join the military, because I'm a big daddy's girl, once I told him that I wanted to join the military, he just told me not to do Navy. I never asked why. To this day, I really don't know why. So when I got turned down, in a sense, in my mind, by the Air Force, because, you know, the two jobs they had, I didn't want to do, I went to the Army, and that's what I've stuck with. Um, I've been in now for six years because I started the process in 2009 but I didn't sign my contract until March of 2010 so anyway yeah you talk to recruiters now what I will tell you about recruiters is once you start talking to one you're not obligated to that recruiter make sure you find a recruiter that is good for you I've heard some horror stories horror stories horrible stories let me just say horrible not horror but horrible stories about some recruiters and things they did to people and the lies that they told just like with a salesperson they're gonna pitch you things and in your mind once you find out the truth it's like well they lied to me they didn't necessarily lie to you they may have bent the truth a little bit which is still kind of lying but they do bend the truth um a lot again do your research um so I spoke with my recruiter. Um, of course, I chose my branch, the Army. From there, I had to get things cleaned up. Now, me, I didn't have um, a squeaky clean record, you know, driving record, little misdemeanor that I... Yeah, anywho, I had to get some court stuff um, situated. So when I started talking to the recruiter in 2009, I had to get some court things situated. You can't leave for basic training with any warrants, any open cases, or anything else like that. It's just my personal experience. Something had happened, and um, a lot of my traffic things I paid off. Some got thrown off, so I was done with that. And I had one more case, and it was actually in the state of Kansas. And I feel the judge was being a jerk, but he sentenced me to um, 14 days of house arrest. Yes, I believe. Or was it 30? No, he sentenced me to 30 days of house arrest. And, you know, I went to court. I was on house arrest. Horrible. Oh, my gosh. But um, I think I was, like, on my... I may get the numbers wrong. Don't quote me. But I think I did house arrest for, like... I think I did house arrest for... Let's see. What, like, 10 days or something like that. Because I believe my recruiter, my recruiter ended up calling me and he was like, no, you can't do that. Because if you do, I believe it was like over 14 days of, you know, um, house arrest. They will consider that like you being in jail or for 30 days or something like that. And he was like, you won't be able to sign your contract for another six months. So I went back to the courts and I told the judge and he was like, well, I'm not going to. So just throw this out, you know, he was like, how many days have you done of house arrest? And however many days I had done, he was like, okay, well, if it was, let's say my recruiter said that it was 14 days, I couldn't do more. Let's say I did, I don't know, 10 or 11 days of house arrest. He was like, okay, the remaining of your time, since you can't do over 14 days, you have to do in jail. You ready to go now? 
And I'm just like, well, what? I have to go to jail. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go to jail. But I knew that I wanted my career in the military. So I'm like, well, can I just turn myself in tomorrow? He's like, fine, turn yourself in tomorrow. And I just was so devastated. I went home. I told my mom. And I'm like, Ramila has to stay with you uh, for a couple of days. Anywho, I turned myself into jail. It was the worst time of my life. And I've never been back to jail ever since. Since 2010. I've never been back to jail. But, um, wait, I lied there. But it was only for traffic stuff. Anyway, once. But, anywho... So I um, did that or whatever, and the next process was MEPS. So again, you have to have all of this stuff cleared up before. So then my recruiter was like, okay, let's go to MEPS. Now, when my recruiter called me, now at the time, if you haven't caught my drift, I was a single parent. The military changes so much with if they allow single parents in or not that to this day, if you're asking me, I would say I'm not sure, especially with different branches. Um, I would say I'm not sure you would need to either contact a recruiter or go visit your local recruiter's office and ask if they're allowing single parents to join. But in my situation, I joined, um, I signed my contract March 10th, uh, 2010 and March 11th, 2010 they did away with the single parent waiver in the United States Army Reserve. So when my recruiter called me on March 10th, he actually called me at like seven in the morning. He's like, look, they're doing away with this waiver. If you're going to join, you need to join today. So I went to his office. We ended up leaving his office, went to MEPS. And I probably got to MEPS around um, nine o'clock. I was at MEPS from like 9 o'clock in the morning to like 6 or 7 o'clock at night. When I say it was long, because they literally do and check for everything. They're checking your height. They're checking your weight because those two have to coincide. Um, yes, people are like, well, why are they checking your height and weight if they're going to get you fit in basic training? True, but you can't just go in, excuse my language, like a sloppy mess or just super skinny. Like you can be underweight and they'll tell you, no, you need to go gain weight before we can let you in. So, uh, they did height and weight. Um, they check all your tattoos. Uh, they do a hearing test. They do a vision test for females. You get a pregnancy test. Um, what else? It's a bunch of paperwork you have to sign. You go over your contract, make sure you know what's in your contract. That is something that's very important that my recruiter did tell me. Make sure you know what's in your contract. Some people think they're getting loan repayment in their contract and they don't. Some people think they're getting a bonus or a sign-on bonus and they're not. So you need to know what's in your contract. Um, I think I skipped like a whole bunch. I did. I skipped the ASVAB. How dare me? Anywho, let me back up a little bit. So the ASVAB. The ASVAB test, my recruiter told me about it. And again, that goes hand-in-hand -hand with picking a good recruiter because my recruiter told me about the ASVAB and he actually gave me some books and some online websites. I had been out of high school for like three years, three or four years, give or take. And I was just like, if I was fresh out of high school, I probably would have to go in and not study and I'll pass with flying colors, but I didn't. But then when he gave me the stuff, I'm thinking in my head, well, I wasn't out of high school that long. I don't have to study. Well, I went and took my first ASVAB and I flunked it by one point. <laughs> That's flunking to me. I was so disappointed. Like, you have no idea. I did not pass by one point. So I went back. I used the online tools. I used the books that he gave me. And I went back and I scored high to me. Um, with the ASVAB, that helps you determine what job that you can get. Um, your background also can hinder that too, because I won't lie with, um, the small misdemeanor that I had, it wouldn't allow for me to get a security clearance at the time. So some of the jobs that were gravy that were, okay, you can choose this. I actually couldn't choose because of my past. So what I will tell you guys is if you're a teenager or, you know, a young adult looking at this video, please make sure that 
you're not doing anything wrong or that you're not supposed to be doing in life. You know, we all know right from right, wrong from wrong. I knew I shouldn't have did some of the things that I did, but I did anyway. So, um, anyway, yeah, ASVAB, and then you get to MEPS. Um, at MEPS, I didn't take anyone with me. I seen a lot of people did have people there or they called them towards the end because then you get sworn in. Um, once you get sworn in, you sign your contract, you get sworn sworn in, and you are a soldier. One of the happiest days of my life. I'm not going to lie. I was ecstatic. Um, let's see. Now, getting things in order. Um, with my daughter, daughter, since I was a single parent, I had to sign a, um, or I had to get a um, family care plan. Basically, it was a piece of paper that I had to fill out with me, my daughter's information, and my mom's information, um, which gave my mom temporary custody of my daughter while I was gone. And basically, it was a family care plan. They knew that I couldn't use my daughter as an excuse because you put on the dotted lines that this is who she's going to be with, this is who she can go with if you get deployed while you're in training or anything else like that. So I had to do that. Um, I did not keep my apartment uh, when I went into basic and AIT. And the reason I didn't, and I would say not to, especially if you're a single or you're a teenager or, you know, you're a young adult with no kids, or even if you do have kids, that's going to create bills for you when you can be actually saving your money. Um, and that goes for reservists, more so active duty. There's no need for you to keep an apartment or a place because active duty, you're not going back home. You're just not. Um, the difference between active duty and reservist is active duty. Like I said, you're not going back home. You're going to have a duty station somewhere. As for reservists, you're going to go to basic training and then AIT, which is advanced individual training. And then you're going to go home and your uh, duty station to be in your hometown or in the surroundings. With reservists, we drill one weekend out of the month, which is typically Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. Sometimes it's Friday through Sunday or sometimes it's Thursday through Sunday on rare occasions. And then two weeks out of the summer, which is your annual training. Um, once you do that, um, choose which one you want to do. I say it's kind of like a downhill thing from there. Basic training wasn't hard. No, but it was challenging. Um, if I could do it all over again, I would because you learn your strengths in there. Like they break you down to your lowest point. A lot of people ask, did I exercise before I went? No, I didn't. Um, I've always been good at running. So with my two mile run, um, I think my first two mile run was like 17 or 16 or something, which is really good. But when I joined my middle sit-ups was 50, I went into the military doing like three or four sit-ups. <laughs> literally so if you don't work out before that's fine trust me they're gonna get you where they want you um basic training is the first week that you go to basic and AIT it's in process in which they're doing kind of everything that they did at MEPS all over again they're checking your hearing your eyesight they're checking your health they're checking your teeth excuse me you have dentist appointments you get all of that done. Um, the hardest part about basic for me was living with 50 females or 49. That was the hardest part. I am not a big, I don't know, like, I don't like a bunch of drama. And when you get too many females around each other, I just feel you get a bunch of drama and a bunch of periods collide and it's just like, it was tiring. Um, but in the end, you do... I will say that joining the military, you do make friends for life. Like, you meet people all around the world. There were people aging from 17 to 42, 43 in my basic training class. Some were from Hawaii. Some were from Africa. Some were from New York. Some were from Texas, California, Oregon, Rhode Island. I mean, you name it, it was people there. You're going to meet people all around the world. So I think that's kind of like a pro of being in the military. Um, a lot of people ask me, how's the food? The food was horrible. It was horrible. And don't be in the field because then you have to eat MREs. 
I'm not gonna lie, like the last week of basic training, I went on an MRE strike. Like I was eating twice a day and that was in the morning at breakfast and then a hot lunch if they gave us hot lunch or hot dinner. But if we were in the field, we got we had at least one hot meal and sometimes I was just eating that hot meal and the snacks out of the MRE. Those things, some of them are good, but some of them are just horrible. Horrible. Um, let's see. Um, what to expect? I can say in basic training, AI, well, basic training more so, you are going to get broke down to your lowest point. Like, things may go smooth for us some. Things can go bad for others. Like, I had stretch fractures in both of my knees, swelling on my knees, swelling on my ankles. I rolled my ankle in AIT. Like, things are going to happen, but you can't let that, you can't let that, um, deter you. Like, you have to keep pushing, um, what else? You can get recycled. So, like, if you fail your, um, APFT, your PT test or whatever, you could get recycled. That is the worst thing to do. Go in there, and if you do what they tell you to do, you're going to make it. If they you do the workouts that tell you to do, you're going to get in fit, and it's going to be easy to stay in fit if you're determined. So I just say go in there, determine what should you pack. You should not pack a lot. Like half of the things that I packed to go to basic, they made me throw away, literally. Like, you can't have gum in there. You're not going to listen to music. Well, let me rephrase that. When I went, you couldn't have gum. You weren't listening to music. No TV. Um, you require one phone call when you first get there to let your parents know that you made it. Anytime after that, they weren't required to let you call home. We got calls home on Sunday, but don't. if someone messed that up, everyone didn't get to call home. So, it was hard being away from my daughter and being away from my family, but what I did prayer was my best friend god was my best friend and knowing what i was there to do i stayed focused like one thing that i used to tell myself and people when females or males make me mad i didn't come here to make friends that was my motto at first basic training i didn't go to make friends i went to do what i needed to do now ait and you know afterwards yes you most definitely make friends but basic training don't be stuck on making friends because at the end of the day, that friend can throw you under the bus, you know. Um, don't turn against each other either, though. In basic training, your drill sergeants want to see how well you mesh, how well you can work together. Because you are going to be battle buddies. Life or death. Like, if you get deployed, that person next to you who you hate could be the one that shoots that, that shot that saves your life. The other one that you hate and can't stand could be the person that drags you out and puts a tourniquet on your leg and saves your life. So don't go in with hatred or don't show hatred, but go in focus. Know what you're there to do and do it. Um, if you're young, if you have no kids, I say go active duty. If I don't regret neither one of my children, but if I didn't have my children, I would have went active duty off tops. That's just me. Um, it's rewarding. You get a lot of perks. You get a lot of benefits. <laughs> Homeowner help. Um, the pay is good. Rank is, you know, everything is there for you to succeed. You just have to be the one to succeed. Um, so yeah, you just have to, you have to take it for, take it for what it is. An opportunity for growth, an opportunity for a career, and an opportunity in advance in life. I think I hit just about everything. I'm not sure if there's anything that I left out or you want me to go more in depth on the different type of branches, what I know, what I know about the military. I mean, the army itself and my personal experience, I'll be more than happy to do that. Um, regulations, things of that sort, because there is regulations. Oh, a question I did forget. Um, I was asked how I wore my hair to basic training for black women or women of color i actually wore micros and my micros would have lasted if i would have braided past my hair but i didn't so um i think i took my micros out maybe two weeks before basic training was over which wasn't really bad so so again just you know do what's best for you take it for you know what it's there for and that's to help you again if you have any other questions or concerns be my guest leave it in the comments below please don't forget to like and subscribe love you